What is up guys and welcome back to another episode of the F124 driver career mode. Today we have episode number four which is taking place at Imola but if you missed the previous episode that took place at the Australian Grand Prix then I'm going to leave a link to that video in the top right hand corner of your screen now so you can go and check it out because there is about to be a spoiler alert. That was a very, very good race for us because, and I can't believe that I'm saying this, we were able to fight for our first ever podium finish. Unfortunately though, we ended up just short, finishing up in P4, less than a second off our first podium in Formula 1. That went to Sergio Perez in a race that was dominated once again by Max Verstappen. However, not so much in qualifying as I managed to somehow drag my V-carb up to the front row and just coming within three hundredths of a second of the Dutch driver in qualifying. That was an unbelievable race. So we're coming into this episode with a decent bit of momentum on our side, although we have had to take a little bit of a season break because there's around a month, I think, between the Grand Prix in Australia and at Emilia Romagna, which is what we're here to do today in this episode. So that does mean, though, that there is lots of time to get some upgrades ordered. You can see there's a big list of them there, one for durability and two for the aerodynamics department. And as we cut through to the race weekend, the pacing practice is already feeling Feeling better. I do feel like this car is improving the handling of it and you know I don't know if we're going to get a chance to see the performance chart but all the teams brought upgrades to this weekend you can look at it there so you know I'm really glad we did manage to get so many upgrades on the car because otherwise we'd be losing out in the competition to get a quick car and we'd just be losing out to our rivals so and it obviously makes sense to try and bring as many upgrades as we can in the big season break but for now let's see how many of them were worth it as we go to qualifying. Welcome to the circuit named for Ferrari. It is qualifying at a special arena for motorsport. Welcome to Imola. Welcome to qualifying at Imola and here we are, this is the end of my first flying lap. I decided to wait until everyone else had set a lap time and then going out when the track was clear because then based on my qualifying pace in the previous few races it's actually been quite good and across the line we go to P13. We're only 10th off Alexander Albon who's in P11 but I do think an improvement is required so I went out again at the end of the session and a big improvement is what we got 8 tenths of a second up we're going to be absolutely fine to get into Q2 in fact I'm still in P13 as we cross the line and we go all the way up to P2 for the fourth race in a row in Q1 I've ended up in P2 and Max Verstappen has been on provisional pole that is one of the creepiest things I've ever seen. It's like history keeps repeating itself in every Grand Prix so far this season. So, oh well. Thankfully, my teammate Yuki Tsunoda was nicely into Q2 as well. And it was really quite close. He was down in sort of, you know, P12, P13, something like that. And he was only half a second off the pace of the leader. So it was a really close grid. And my first lap in Q2... I didn't do very well. You can see I'm still in P15. So now this is my final run in Q2. Going out again at the end of the session, I'm using a fresh set of softs because my first run was done on a scrub soft tyre that I used in Q1. And look at that, already finding the improvement. Purple sector one, nearly four tenths of a second up as we're coming through the final sector now, nearly nine tenths of a second up. So we're finding heaps and heaps of times. Look, seven tenths up the split there on the left-hand side against the time posted by Esteban. And off on through the middle sector so we're going to be absolutely fine you know finding a second once again it's a shame that my first laps can't be quite as consistent I don't think my middle sector was particularly strong though on the first lap which is why I found all the time in that part of the lap but 1.3 seconds up as we cross the line that's more than enough to get into Q3 in fact that's provisional pole we've gone to P1 wow again you know I didn't to be honest, I didn't increase the AI for this session, so we're still running on 90. Okay, it was very close with Norris and Sainz in the end, but just because I thought 
In the previous race, we ran on 88 difficulty in qualifying, and I was very close to getting pole. So I thought, if we keep it on 90, we know the AI are very good over one lap pace. And as it turns out, my teammate was eliminated in Q2, so I definitely should have increased it even more. But into Q3 we go. Very, very close to missing the cutoff time at the end of the session there. We're crossing the line to start the lap with just four seconds remaining. So this is it now. I'm putting it all into this one lap at the end of Q3. This is a gamble, but I decided to not use any other tyres, no more scrub sets, just use the one single set of soft compound tyres that I have reserved for qualifying three and see what the lap is. So obviously we don't know really in relation to anyone else what the sector times are though as we're coming through the chicane, seven tenths of a second slower than Oscar Piastri who is currently in P6. So I think it's safe to say we're not going to be qualifying in the top six unless I can have an absolutely unbelievable final sector but we're coming through the final couple of corners now, missed the apex slightly there, through the final corner, a bit too much of the inside kerb, using all the batteries we come up to cross the line. What's it going to be? 116, 117. And in fact, unfortunately, I peaked too early because it's only P10. I don't think my middle sector was particularly good on that lap and I was absolutely kicking myself afterwards because of the pace we've showed in other qualifying sessions with three tenths slower than the nearest sure runner, which is Lewis Hamilton. Like so. Tomorrow. What a shame. I think it's safe to say we definitely peaked too early in that qualifying session. So unfortunately, we're only going to start from P10 for the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. There is one final thing I forgot to mention. It's a full wet race. I have never done any wet weather driving on this game at all. Hopefully, this is not too embarrassing. Welcome once again to the Autodroma Internationale Enzo and Dino Ferrari. The clue is in the name. This is very much Ferrari home turf and the locals will be out in force today to support their team in what we hope will be a magnificent spectacle of motorsport. On then to the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. And like most Formula One tracks, Imola is driven anti-clockwise and offers our drivers today just over three miles of glistening wet tarmac to negotiate. It's made up of a roughly equal split of nine right-hand turns and ten left-hand. Watch the drivers on the way into turn 16. Managing their speed there will be crucial, with the rain only adding to the difficulty of that downhill braking section, which then, of course, leads them into the track's longest straight, though no DRS there today, of course. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. World champion Max Verstappen starts from pole position and Lando Norris lines up alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Leclerc, Perez, Sainz, Oscar Piastri, Russell, Hamilton, Walker, Ocon, Sonoda, Albon, Joe, Gasly, Sargent, Fernando Alonso, Bottas, Magnussen, Hulkenberg, and Lance Stroll brings the grid to a close. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track where preparations are underway. Welcome to the commentary box. I'm Alex Jakes. Alongside me is Anthony Davidson. Now, those final hours before a race, did you have a routine? Well, for them, you know, you've got your pre-race rituals that you go through. You see different drivers uh, that, you know, some have got their headphones on, they're listening to the music. Some drivers really absorb the energy from the crowd and they're there waving to them. Other drivers, they go within themselves. They chat to their engineers, absorbing that information, that vital information that you need to carry you through the race. And, you know, those pre-race rituals are essential to making things systematic. We do a lot of Grand Prix in a season, and the more systematic you can be, the easier you are within that environment. Right, let's see if we can push for another points finish in this race. Good luck. Safe to say it's a little bit damp this afternoon. Welcome to the grid at Emola. As you can see, it is a full wet Grand Prix, so that means I'm going to try and go for a no-stop race. I know the game was suggesting a one-stop from one set of wets onto another set of wets. However, as far as I'm aware, there is still a rule that you don't have to make a pit stop in wet weather conditions. I feel like I've just completely made myself look an idiot now because I bet that's been removed. But as far as I'm aware, you don't have to pit in the rain. And I'm going to take another gamble by underfueling. Because it's such heavy rain, I imagine there's going to be lots of lift and coast. So I'm going to underfuel by 0.3 of a lap 
and hopefully I'll be able to do enough lifting coast that I'll be able to save that fuel through the course of the race. So this is a risk because this is the first time that I've underfueled the car as well. So hopefully this isn't going to backfire and we can still have a decent race and not run into any fuel trouble later on. You may have also noticed I only increased the AI by one click. So we're running 91 for this Grand Prix. I didn't want to increase it by too much because okay, this is my first ever AI wet driving in this game. I've done no wet practice whatsoever. <laughs> so this is okay, going in so completely cold. Hopefully this is not such a bad race for us. We're revving up to five red lights and we are underway at Imola and to be honest it's not a terrible start off the line I was expecting it to be far worse we do get a little bit of wheel spin the Alpine of Esteban Ocon almost squeezes me onto the grass there and in fact going in towards turn one the Alpine driver has taken the position although actually later on the brakes holding it round the outside almost hitting Lewis Hamilton in the process I do manage to re-overtake the French driver and get back into P9 and you can see already I'm really struggling for traction trying to plant the power quite a few lock up skidding sliding all over the place and then losing the rear end so it's going to take me a long time to try and get used to the conditions obviously we did qualifying which was dry and then practice it was also completely dry so you know this is really a complete leap into the unknown for me I don't know what to expect I'm expecting though the guys at the front are going to gap me by a significant margin and that's exactly what they've done Hamilton already 3.2 in front of me after just two laps and in here comes Yuki Tsunoda my teammate is going to go all the way around the outside down at turn one I'm just going to let him get on with it although I do make a slight bit of contact there we are running simulation damage and thankfully it doesn't look like I have got any damage as a result of that but look at the way he just drives off the AI getting perfect traction in the rain as always it just it is a little bit unrealistic and then I'm almost losing the rear end through that corner once again so it is going to take me a while I suspect to get used to the conditions out on track and as we're cutting towards the end of lap number three and the start of lap number four this time it's Esteban Ocon who's using the slipstream and the Alpine driver is going to pull alongside me and use some of the battery to get the move done on the pit straight no DRS enabled of course so we're just going to have to use the battery to get that done and it does make fairly light work with me I haven't got any ERS left to try and defend that so we're just going to fortunately going to have to let the French driver get on with it as we're follow following him through Tamburello chicane it is still a little bit slippy now though onto lap number nine and my engineer has given me an objective to try and save some fuel you can see that probably is a wise decision because nine laps into the Grand Prix, technically I haven't really saved any fuel yet. We're still pretty much 0.3 laps under, which is exactly what we started the Grand Prix with. And I think the main reason for that is because I'm just trying to feel my way around the track, learn the conditions, get used to keeping the car pointing in a straight line, finding the traction zones and get used to driving in the wet before then I start the whole fuel saving process with lifting, coasting, etc. So I think now we're obviously getting towards the midpoint of the race and I'm being put under serious pressure from behind so I can't really do any fuel saving as of yet in fact here comes Alexander Albon speaking of pressure from behind although I do manage to match his breaking point thankfully and send one back down the inside in order to successfully keep the position meanwhile all this is happening Ocon's now 10 seconds yes 10 in front of me almost however notice now that my teammate Yuki Tsunoda has just come into the pit lane so this is a lifeline for me this is where I think I might be able to gain some places on the AI this is the race leader Max Verstappen who is having it all his own way out in front currently undefeated so far this season and he is now coming into the pit lane so I suspect this means that most of the AI are going to be doing a pit stop in this Grand Prix onto a fresh set of wets. Obviously, I'm still under the impression that I don't need to make a pit stop in the wet and therefore I can just stay on the wet compound tyres all the way to the end of the race because the tyre wear is actually really, really good. That's one of the things that I like about the full wet tyres is they're extremely durable as a race tyre. I think by the, this point in the race, my tyre wear was only about 20%, so it was still more than enough for me to be able to make it to the end without needing to make a pit stop. And there are indeed some drivers in the pit lane at this moment in time and that's going to push me up into P7 although for how much longer because the kick Sauber of Guan Yu Zhou someone who we, I don't think we've even seen at all in this career mode so far has just completely sent one round the outside of the first corner and successfully got himself up into P7 and already almost pulled a second out on me there's the tyre wear that I mentioned so it's definitely enough wear in that to be able to get me to the end of the Grand Prix without making a pit stop although 
The thing is, I do think I will be seriously, seriously struggling and put under serious pressure from behind. This is now, I think we're about to start lap number 14. Verstappen and Norris are both in front of me. Okay, I'm so now in P3 because eight, everyone else who's in front seconds. of me is pitted. There's Perez practically pushing me along the pit straight. Off you go, Checo. Don't hold me up, please. I'm just going to let that go because obviously he's in a Red Bull. He's going to be much quicker than me. And I have now managed to save a decent amount of fuel. We're down to 0.14 laps under fuel. So that's definitely something which we can make up. Meanwhile, this is the Haas of Kevin Magnussen having a spin down at Tozer. It's a shame for him. He's going to lose a few positions. Well, I don't think he was anywhere near fighting for points in this Grand Prix anyhow. So it probably doesn't really matter much because there was a brief yellow flag and I thought I'd just try and find what the cause of it was. The Danish driver is able to continue and is thankfully unharmed. And this is still just following me along the pit straight because at the moment I have a McLaren in my slipstream as we're starting lap number 15. And his name is Oscar Piastri who dips a tyre on the grass there in his haste to try and get past me. Full commitment there from the McLaren and he manages to successfully navigate me and get himself up into P4. So I am losing positions at the moment, although I am still just about quick enough to be able to hold off the guys behind me. You know, Sainz, Hamilton, George Russell's in there, Charles Leclerc's in there and I think ultimately my teammate as well. I've successfully completed another objective to drain the ERS. There goes Carlos Sainz, the Scarlet Ferrari does fly past me and to the cheers of a rain-soaked Tifosi gets himself up into P5 by the time we reach Tamburello. So I am falling down the order a little bit, obviously worn tyres and the fact that my pace is going to be worse than the guys behind me. The tyres are not looking too bad though, however we still are managing to save some fuel which is going to inhibit my pace because I'm having to lift and coast into quite a few corners. However, we are now down to about 0.1 laps of under-fueling, so we are definitely saving some fuel which is good. So there are still six laps to go. We now, however, watching Nico Hulkenberg. And he is responsible for the yellow flag, which you may have just noticed has been brought out in sector one. The German driver is having a mechanical failure. It's been a really disappointing Grand Prix for Haas. One driver spinning, one driver retiring the race with an engine failure. Meanwhile, as we cut back to my onboard, and I'm being put under all sorts of pressure by Lewis Hamilton, who tried to go around the outside, but there's a red flag! Red flag for a mechanical failure! Oh my word, that is the first intervention from the stewards we've seen in this entire career mode. No safety cars, no VSCs as of yet. However, they've just gone and dropped the red flag straight away. And this completely threw me off course. However, this completely saves my Grand Prix because we effectively get a free pit stop now. I wasn't planning on making a pit stop, but obviously I'll take the fresh set of tyres now that I can get them. Oh, wow. This is all the drama that's happening in this race. I think also the fact that it was completely full monsoon rain conditions also contributed to the decision that has just been made by the FIA. So we're now going back to the race stop on board from P6, don't forget. Five red lights are now out after a very long hold and there's only five laps to go to the end of this Grand Prix. Short shifting up to third, almost losing the back end there. There is just such a small amount of grip on the track. The rain is still absolutely driving down here at Imola. A little bit of contact there made with signs down at turn one. That gives an opportunity to Hamilton. We're going to go wheel to wheel through turns two and three there. Thankfully, I do manage to use a bit of the exit curve, hang it round the outside, but the red flag has also enabled me to save fuel. There you go. We go green on fuel for the first time in this Grand Prix. And after that contact with science, I just had to check that we are definitely running simulation damage, which we are, as you've just seen. And I was very lucky to not get any damage in that incident. Now moving on to lap number 20. And look at this pace. Purple sector one. Where on earth did this pace come from? It's like the red flag is completely revolutionised my Grand Prix because all of a sudden I'm able to keep up with the Ferrari and the Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton is just struggling to keep up with me. There's a gap forming behind Hamilton. Snowder again is dropping a little bit back off the, this group which is in the top seven. However, cutting to the front of the race, this is going to be a landmark day for Formula One because the McLaren driver is coming through the final corner and for the first time this year it will be someone other than Verstappen and it's Lando Norris who wins at Imola and takes victory for the first time in Formula One. What a drive from Norris. He took the lead off the restart 
after the red flag, Max Verstappen stood no chance and then he's defended his position and earned his first ever Formula 1 victory. Meanwhile for me, we have done absolutely everything right today. We've just managed our pace, managed the fuel and we're going to be rewarded with P6 at Imola. What a way to head to victory. Lando Norris takes the win. It was, it was a joy to watch today, honestly, because the driver was clearly able to read the conditions well on track, to use the information properly from the team, and usually come up with the right solution at the right time. Our drivers are making their way out for the podium celebrations, and it's gonna be McLaren picking up the winner's trophy. Congratulations to the entire team for that fantastic performance. an event like that who knows what the sport has in store for us next time be sure to join us again as we continue to bring you the latest excitement in formula one this grand prix had absolutely everything driving rain red flags spins retirements and above all a maiden victory for Lando Norris. There's the results from Emila. Norris wins. It's a double podium for Red Bull. Piastri P4 in front of Sainz. Then myself. Then Hamilton, Sonoda, Leclerc and George Russell completing the points. And of all people, it's Fernando Alonso who gets the bonus point for the fastest lap. In the Drivers' Championship, Verstappen is still the runaway leader, although his advantage out front has been cut down to 34 points after this Grand Prix. And apart from that, there aren't many other changes. We have now got 25 points and we are still in front of both Mercedes drivers and Fernando Alonso. It was a great day for our team in the constructors as we leap over Aston Martin and now just two points behind Mercedes. We are in the fight for P4, but with double points, we scored 12 points at this Grand Prix. It's hardly any wonder. We possibly got a bit lucky with the red flag today, but I drove my own race. I knew what strategy I wanted to do. And in the end, everything just fell into place. And that was a very, very good race from us today. But that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to like share and subscribe don't forget to follow me on instagram and join my discord server both links are in the description below and i'll see you guys all next time goodbye